This is Dead Air, a show about short horror stories worthy of discussion. I'm Dead Pallet, the ghost hoping to protect something I loved. At this moment in non-time, we're tackling a creepypasta that goes by the name Gunpowder Hill. Every year, during a period from 1946 to 1952, the residents of a small town in western Germany heard what resembled a six-gun salute on the 15th of every March. Some residents made frequent trips to the surrounding hills in hopes of finding the source of the noise, but to no avail. The townsfolk eventually named the area Gunpowder Hill. The children of the town even created a legend about it, stating that soldiers, who at the time were missing, had been executed and were buried somewhere in the hill. The purpose of the six-gun salute was to guide people in the location of the men, to the location of the men. On the 15th of every March, the children would gather at the edge of town, eagerly awaiting the six gun shots to be heard. So, we're already getting a beautiful um, premise in in a little town, and it's, it's a very believable story, um, and it's a very beautiful mystery. Late in 1951, the hills on the outskirts of the small German town were surveyed for the future NATO construction of a NATO military site. The military base would de- uh, was to consist of a series of deep underground bunkers and weapons supplied in the case of a Soviet invasion. In February 1952, construction began. Just four weeks later, the crew began digging a massive 200-foot deep hole in the future underground storage bunkers for the end. For the end, okay. So we're getting the idea that we might be finding these uh, buried, executed soldiers. Um, even though these, this is an urban legend that the kids came up with and has no necessary basis in reality. I think that that's where the story might be heading. I haven't read this story, by the way. I've been meaning to read this one, so we're going to see if this is where that goes. Maybe they might subvert my expectations, and that'd be pretty cool if they do it in a clever and uh, interesting way. I do want to know what the name of the small uh, town in West Western Germany is, but again, that's me being a stickler. It was during this time that the crew made a morbid discovery. Oh, Oh, looks like I might be right. As they neared the end of the digging operation, a human hand was seen sticking out of the bottom of the hole. Upon further examination, 27 bodies were discovered at the bottom of the 200-foot deep hole, dressed in prisoner of war uniforms worn by the Allies in Nazi war camps. The NATO officer ordered the bodies be exhumed immediately. As the medical team watched the bodies being carried out of the hole, they looked on in puzzlement. The bodies were remarkably well preserved. Furthermore, the POW uniforms bore a strange insignia unlike any of the men had ever seen. Mm. The orange circle with a black dash in the middle. However, the most unsettling characteristic was the faces. Should Should that be War the Faces? I think that should be where the faces. Their eyes were wide open, and their mouths were sealed shut with an unknown adhesive. The bodies were immediately dispatched to the local morgue for identification and pathological examination. So again, we're getting this this beautiful little puzzle, and there's only two paragraphs left. I don't know that this um, little mystery is going to be solved in that time, and I kind of like that. This is... Uh, beautiful. There's these little eccentricities, little details that are nice. They were they were well preserved. Um, not necessarily impossible, but um, un unlikely to say the least. And it's it's couched very well in real world events. The building of a NATO um military base. That's that's wonderful. That night, the local mortician began his work. He found it difficult to concentrate on his task. The eyes of the first man he was to begin work on seemed to be staring back at him. The mortician took his scalpel and began his first cut. Blood poured out of the incision with a staggering force. The mortician backed away from the table in shock. The red liquid began running down the table, pooling at the floor below. The eyes of the body began watering. 
The streaks of tears ran down its face. Soon the eyes rolled back in its head. Bleeding, the bleeding ceased. In the horror, the mortician ran to the door, but not before catching a glance of the twenty-six other bodies laying on the separate tables, their eyes staring at him, and with hopeless fear, the men were alive. So, fucking, fucking ridiculous, but I like it somehow. It, it's got a lot of moxie <laughs> for, for not being believable there at the end. So, we, we get this twist at the end, that they're all alive, but it's not resolved we don't get any more details than that and that i think is a little bit damning um it's a great point to end on but we do need it to be resolved as to why there's no medical documentation of these men being alive there's got to be some reason that physical evidence can't be presented that reports of this that are valid can't be uh demonstrated so i think that there there are a ton of ways that you could do this uh, you could just be like, well, they went back and they were dead again. Um, or something about them being buried was keeping them alive and then they died before any sort of concrete records, records of this uh, situation could be recorded. Um, there are ways that you can deal with this, but, uh, ultimately, a really cool story, really impactful. Um, I'm interested to know if the ending is something that people are happy with, if they are satisfyingly dissatisfied with it, or if they are dissatisfyingly dissatisfied with it. Um, the overall story itself, excellent, on point. Uh, wish I had read this one earlier. I'm going to uh, stop talking. <laughs>